Josh Ramsey, it's really nice to finally meet you. We're a big fan of you and Mariana's Trench here at Cool FM. How are you? Thank you. Uh, I'm doing great. How are you? Good, thank you. Very good. So you have a new album coming out, which is why we are chatting The Josh Ramsey Show. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, I, The first question I just want to get out of the way. Is it because Elton John stole the title that you were hoping to go for, Lockdown Sessions? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he's he's very good at what he does. Um, no, I, I just kind of, sh- I, 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 it was just sort of a joking. I mean, uh, there's been several times in my career that I've come up with working titles that were jokes that ended up just being the actual title. Um, and this was one of them because I was kind of like, well, I mean, I played everything. So what is it? Just kind of like the Josh Ramsey show. And that, then it just kind of stuck. Um, but, you know, it also I also liked it because if um, I was sort of thinking about the album, like a sort of like a variety show, because like uh, every song is a different genre. I really tried to not do the same thing twice ever on the record. So in that way, it made me think of those like 60s variety shows where like everything's a little bit different, you know? Yeah. And you said you started it during lockdown when everything no one was seeing anyone. Is this was this something that you'd had? kind of in the works before lockdown or is it a result of not being able to go anywhere? Um, it's both. Uh, I had always, I had always planned on, on one day doing an album where I played all of the instruments myself and the guys in the band knew that I wanted to do that at some point and were like totally supportive of that. Um, but it was sort of like, well, when am I going to get around to doing that? And then the pandemic happened and I was like, I've got an idea. Um, it, it was kind of like that, you know, cause, uh, Cause I mean, remember, remember the very beginning of, of the pandemic when it was like, you do not leave the house. Like remember like when it was the beginning there. So when it was that, I was like, okay, I'll just lock myself in a room and make a record. That sounds fun. Um, So, I mean, for me, the pandemic was great because that that's, uh, that's basically all I did was just sit around and write music. It was, I had a blast. (laughs) And so you did, you played just about all the instruments on this album. What's your, what's your favorite one instrument? Um, whether you can play it or not, like maybe cello. I, 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 I did play a little bit of cello on this record and that was the most challenging because I didn't know, and I certainly am not a master cello cellist now either, but um, I had a cello and I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that I can at least play one line on this thing. So I did play one tiny little cello part. I think the most, the most satisfying thing to play for me is probably drums just because it's so visceral and you just, you can work out all your frustrations and, and there's never, uh, you're hitting it too hard. It's just like hit it harder, harder, you know, so that's, that's perfect for me. So was it really, really just like you by yourself or did you have like uh, someone else on the other side of the studio or no, no. That, that actually sounds really magical almost. I mean, how often do you get the chance to just do that? I don't, I don't know. Is it common in the music industry? Um, I don't know. It, it sort of reminded me of being a teenager because that's how I made music when I was a teenager. So it sort of, it, it sort of felt like going back to my roots a little bit. Um, just, you know, just playing and seeing what happened and, and just, just, yeah, I just sort of felt like a kid in a playground, kind of. Um, in once we did bring, I did bring in other musicians. Once it got to, there's a couple songs that use a symphony orchestra. Um, so for that, you know, yeah, you need people. Um, and and actually, the recording of those songs um, were some of the most like uh, epic recording sessions I've ever done. Cause like uh, the last song on the record is is a full symphony orchestra. Um, it's just me singing in a symphony and. I wrote it using, uh, you know, uh, symphony libraries and and vo- with virtual instruments and stuff. And I, I thought that's what was going to be how it had to be because of of the pandemic. I was like, we're not going to be able to get 150 people into a studio together in, in a room. There's no way we can do that. And then I realized, well, we could do it if we just recorded the symphony like three or four people at a time. And so that's what we did. And it, it was so time consuming. I can't even begin to tell you. It was like, okay, like for the next three hours, we're recording the first violins. And then after that, we're going to do the second violins. And, and on we went through the entire orchestra. It took a very long time. And, uh, and then it took me weeks to edit it all together to make it actually sound like one cohesive thing. But the end result is awesome. But yeah, it, took, it was a lot of work. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I love about your music actually is the use of orchestras. It's something that makes my spirit very happy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? There's something about strings. It just like, it's great. Uh, thanks. I mean, I guess I, I guess I just find that um, 
as as I've learned more about arranging and writing for for larger piece orchestras, it just it's something that that is very inspiring to me. Um, so it, I, I think it's just sort of part of who I am now as a songwriter. Not that it's like every song uses that, certainly not. But um, it's kind of like when I do go for it, I really go for it. You know. <laughs> and another thing I love about well, your Marianas Trench albums is that they tend to tell a story. You listen from beginning to end and you feel like you've been on a journey. Is this new album, is it going to tell a story kind of like that or is it more just different style of music? And um, it's, it's not, it's not narrative like that. Um, I, you know, one thing I, I thought was uh, sort of at the beginning of the process of trying to work on this record, I was talking to my manager about it and I said, you know, I, I think I want to do a solo record. What do you think? And he said, yeah, so what are you going to do? And I was like, uh, I don't know. What do you mean? And he was like, well, what like what genre are you going to do? Because you're not just going to make a Mariana's Trench record, are you? Uh, and I was like, well, no. I, I, in fact, I think that would be the wrong idea. I don't think anyone would appreciate it if I just went off and made a Mariana's Trench record on my own. I don't think the guys in the band would be very excited about that. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think fans would be very interested in that either. So I, I was like, you know, so so what do I do? Because... I am the songwriter in Marianna's Trench. So what do I want to do if I want to do something that's not a Marianna's Trench record? And that sort of led me to, why don't I just try and do as many genres as possible? And I'll just jump around like really all over the place. Um, and that ended up being the most inspiring idea for me because then it was like, I want to write songs that wouldn't fit on a Marianna's Trench album. Now, a couple of them would, um, but for the most part, it really doesn't, it doesn't feel like a Marianna's Trench album, but it does still feel like me. Um, but it, it jumps all over the place. I mean, it's like, it goes from like, here's a country song, here's EDM, here's grunge. Like I did a full on 90s grunge song. Uh, here's full on big band swing, like right out of the 1940s. Like it really jumps all over the place. Um, but I think that that just was the most inspiring thing to me at the time. And to just stop worrying about genres so much and just worry about writing good songs. Yeah. Well, the first single with Chad Kroger, Lady Mine, actually, when I heard that to me, it was like, oh, this sounds like, it sounds like a little bit like Nickelback, very much not not so much like what you would hear on a Marianas Trench album. Uh, so is that a song that you wrote with him or did you write it first and then say that's perfect for Chad? I wrote it first um, and then asked him to do it. I don't think, for me, it doesn't, I think maybe you're getting that Nickelback comparison just because his voice sounds like his voice. But I think to me, that song, um, what I was actually going for was I was going for like, like Lenny Kravitz or something like that. Like that's what I was thinking. It's sort of bluesy '70s inspired rock that like something like Lenny would do with the big horn section. Um, and and of course that's where the idea started. And then where it ended was like doesn't sound like Lenny Kravitz. It just sounds like it sounds like I took all of the '70s and then smoked a bunch of crack and went. Meh! It's it's like it's really a lot of information in that song. Um, but as I was working on it, I was sort of thinking like who could I ask to sing on this? And uh, Chad popped into my head and we've been friends for a long time. And I was like, man, he would sound awesome on this. And then the more I thought about it, the more I realized he was the only person I could ask to sing on it because he's the only other male singer I know that who could sing it. Um, so, um, so I called him and I quickly kind of went through like, hey, man, I'm working on this solo record. Uh, every song is a different genre. Um, and he thought that was an interesting idea. And then I said, you know, I've written this song. Um, that feels like a 70s throwback rock song. Um, I'm not asking you to sing on it. I'm just asking you, would you just listen to it? And maybe if you liked it, then maybe you would be willing to sing on it. And um, he actually, he was just like, yeah, just send it over. I'll, I'll do it, I'll do it. Um, so he actually said yes without without me uh, playing it to him. So he had said yes without hearing it. Uh, and I'm not sure if that's because he's a great friend or if it's because I maybe caught him once he was already a couple cocktails deep. I don't know. Um, <laughs> Maybe a bit of column A, maybe a bit of column B. <laughs> uh, it sounds like a, a good friend to me. Um, he is, yeah, he is. He's also, like you, incredibly talented. What is one of your favorite things about Chad Kroger? Um, one of my favorite things about Chad Kroger that maybe a lot of people don't know, because I think his, I think his public image and, and his, his sort of persona um, in videos and stuff, he's very serious. Um, and actually in real life, he's such a class clown. Um, he's a really funny guy. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, and we, when we shot the music video for this, we basically spent all day just laughing and clowning around. He's a great vibe to be around. He is. Nice. So what is bringing you joy right now that's outside of your music, outside of promoting this new album? 
um, I really, this is all I've been doing for like a year. So the, I, I've been very focused on doing this. Um, now that the record is done, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's Christmas a thing? I guess that's coming. I don't know. Did you not get to your garden this year? No, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't in a, I was not in a situation where that made sense. Cause I, I, we, I, I sold, I sold that house. So we're living in a place that in a rental place while we renovate another house. So I, I'm not bothering putting any effort into, into this, reno, into this very temporary living situation. Okay. It's hilarious. Actually, we, we moved into this place without even looking at it. Cause we just like, we are like, we need something tomorrow. You know, like it was one of those situations we just have, it's gotta be dog friendly. That's it. So like we we're here for such a short period of time that like my house is still just full of boxes. We didn't even bother unpacking. <laughs> I, I feel I feel like we're nomads at the moment. And have you been able to at least get some cooking in? I know you have a cooking show on YouTube. I do have a cooking show on YouTube. Yes, I have. Yes, I still do that. Yeah, yeah. What's one of your favorite things that you're making right now? What's one of my favorite things that I'm making? I mean, my favorite thing, honestly, is cooking without a recipe and just getting in and being creative and improvising. Um, I sort of, I, I learned to cook because um, uh, there's a Marianas Trench album called Astoria. And before I, before I wrote that album or while I was working on it, I sort of, I went through a really dark time in my life and I went through like a really deep depression. And during that time I had sort of writer's block and I couldn't do, I couldn't work for like almost a year. Um, and I needed a creative outlet because for me, if I'm not doing something creative, I will go crazy. Like I need to be making something in some way all the time. Um, and I didn't know how to cook at all. And it was one of those things that always mystified me. And I was like, I wish I knew how to do that, but I can't. Um, I, I, at that point I could like, you know, make craft dinner and it probably wasn't very good. Um, so basically what I did is I, I was in this really dark depression and I had nothing to do. And I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to learn a skill. I'm going to really learn a skill. So basically using the internet, I, I basically just like put myself through culinary school more, more or less, more or less. Yeah. Nice. And it, and it really, yeah, it really, it, I, I really started once I appreciated it as like a creative art form, that's when stuff really clicked for me. And I was like, okay, I, I, this, this, this is fun now. Now it's not a chore anymore. Now it's fun. Yeah. It's like once you know the basics of how recipes are made, you can tweak them and, and make them into something really special, which is nice. Yeah. The best advice I could have to anyone, like what I did was I would be like, I want to know how to make whatever, let's just lasagna or whatever. Um, and, and then rather than just looking up one recipe and making it look up like six recipes and compare how they're the same and how they're different. And that's where you can learn, like, here's what it must have. And here's clearly someone's own interpretation of it. And that like, that's the best way to learn. Cause you can see like, what, what does it need? And then where's room for improv improv. Nice. Listen, I have an amazing red lentil coconut curry stew recipe that I can send you. Oh yeah, please. Good thing. It is my favorite thing. I'll, I'll send that link um, on chat or something. Um, sure. Just before we go, you are celebrating with Marianna's Trench 10 years of yeah. Ever After. And I cannot believe yeah. that it has been 10 years already. Oh my God, right? Well, yeah, wonderful album. I mean, I love all your all of those albums. Um, but you Thank guys you. recently got to actually go back and, and perform after all this time off with the pandemic. Um, what was what was that like for you being back on stage? I mean, hey, I, I you know, I, I, I was born to be on stage. I, I'm that's the place where I'm the most comfortable. Um, so I, I, it was like coming home. Uh, it felt great. Um, unfortunately, it was. Um, I love my beautiful city of Vancouver, but it was also an outdoor show late September in Vancouver, which means, which means like torrential downpour. Like I can't, I'm actually shocked. They let the show go through um, the show the day before they canceled it because it was flooded. Everything was flooded. And then there was like the next day and we're like, are you guys sure we're doing this show? Like, uh, isn't there like water backstage and stuff, but we did it. Um, and I mean, the stage was covered, so it wasn't so bad for us, but like for, for the audience, I felt terrible. I was like, wow, you guys are really getting blasted. But you know what? Everyone was in a really positive, uh, there was a really positive vibe still. Um, I made sure to be sort of out in the rainy zone as much as possible so that I was like at one with the audience, you know, I was just getting as wet as everybody else. Um, I, I think, I think maybe people were just really excited 
um, and maybe not even that it was a Mariana's Trench show, but just that there was a show at mm-hmm. all. Yeah. I, I think, you know, I think people are really starved for live entertainment. And I think people were like, wait, we're doing something that doesn't involve staring at a laptop. Wow, that's cool. Like, yeah. I, I think I think everyone was just really excited to be out in the real world. I know I was. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I, I felt like the crowd felt like that as well. Yeah. I had a chance to chat with Sean Hook recently and I asked him what it's like for him, like, inside his head when he gets on stage to perform um, as a choir kid like for me it's one of my favorite things so what's it like for you he told me that for him um he said that it, he like he leaves his brain but in a good way and all his critical thinking just stops what is it like for you when you're on stage performing in front of a big crowd um well first of all shout out to sean because he's my buddy and i love sean mm-hmm. um but um for me um there's a couple things like I, um, I have to step into the I have to step into the persona that I've made um, uh, to get the sort of confidence and stuff. And I, I, I feel like the the guy, the guy who I do on stage, I don't really feel much like that's actually me. I feel like that's sort of like a character that I play. Um, so, you know, I'm about 30 minutes before the show, I'm sort of like getting into the character and stuff. And by the time I step on stage, I'm not necessarily Josh anymore. I'm like singer of Mariana's Trench guy. Like, you know, I'm stepping into this, this guy. Um, and for uh, maybe, maybe some front people don't do it that way, but for me, that's always been how I've done it. Um, because then you can slip into it when, um, the, then it's there when you need it. Like, um, for example, um, for example, um, okay, uh, so uh, remember when Much Music was still a thing? Um, I mean, now they're back as a TikTok thing, which is great. Um, but when they were a TV station, um, so like f- um, uh, my mom had a my mom had a disease called Lewy body dementia, and it's a it's a really harsh disease. It's a combination of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's all rolled into one, and you only live for about five years once you're diagnosed with it. So when I found out that she was diagnosed with that. Then I had to play live on Much Music 20 minutes later. So pretty real, pretty, pretty real life stuff that was being talked to me about. Um, and then I got to play live in front of like a few million people. Um, okay, so how do I do that? I step into the character. <laughs> you know, like a day like that, you gotta just, you gotta just be like, okay, I'm not me anymore. I'm just gonna step into this guy. I'm gonna compartmentalize this and I'll come back to this, but uh, I'm going to step into the character and this is what I'm going to do. Um, and like, so for days like that, and everybody has days like that, um, for me, that that's, 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 that's how I do it. Yeah. I had a, a thing like that as well, where I got a text message that my grandfather was dying and I was live on the radio five minutes later. And it's like, what do you do? You have yeah. to step into, this is me on the radio. Exactly. Right. You got to, you got to just turn on and, and, that, and that's the job. <laughs> that's the job. Yeah, well, it's been really lovely to chat with you. So thank you so much. We're really excited to start playing Lady Mine when it comes out. And it was really thank you to finally ma- meet you after all these years. So thanks. yeah, I can't, I can't believe it's taken us this long to meet. I'm so glad we met now. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you.